Hey, it's Sol with another video. A really big thank you to the valued sponsors who keep the coffee running through my veins. Mm. Today we're going to go on a journey through Warcraft history, but with a bit of a twist. We're going to take a look at the top moments in the world of Warcraft token, and see the relationship between that and the 14-year-old MMO. This month will mark four years since the introduction of the WoW token, and while it spans less than half of the World of Warcraft's lifetime, I thought it'd be pretty cool to point out the milestones that caused the numerous changes in price. To help with this, nearly all of the credit goes to the WoWToken.info site, which has dutifully tracked the price of the token since its launch in 2015. And of course also, WoWhead was a very big help. It's been bringing us news and updates forever to help identify the moments when the WoW token prices went up. But for whatever WoW had missed, Google picked up the slack thanks to that thing too. Even though the charts that you see will display the North American region, the trends are mostly the same across all regions. Before I begin, let me first explain just what it is that influences the price of the WoW token. By now we know that players who want to buy gold purchase a WoW token for real money, and then they sell it on the open market. Once it sells to a buyer, the original seller receives the amount of gold that they were quoted at the time that it was posted. The economy of the WoW token follows some very basic rules. The price of the token goes up when there's high demand to buy the token with gold, and not enough supply, as in players who are buying them with money. Conversely, the price of the token goes down when there isn't enough demand but plenty of supply. So when doing this research, I found it pretty interesting to see what does and doesn't influence the sudden shifts in price. For example, it doesn't matter who the US president is, if there's uh, been a celebrity drama or a natural disaster. The factors that influence the WoW token's price are very direct. By the end of this piece, you might share my opinion that these big price changes aren't really a good barometer of how players feel about the game, but more so just how they spend their gold. And you'll see what I mean. So let's get started. It was April 10th, 2015 when the Apple Watch was first put up for pre-order and the anxiety over its success was already weighing in. Barack Obama was still the US president and Law & Order SVU was on its 16th season. The Wild Token was first introduced to a flurry of controversy, a mix of hope and cynicism, greed and um, pretty much greed. So it comes as no surprise that the current price of the Wild Token is nowhere near where it was at its original start date. Ronda Rousey got the rowdy smacked out of her when she was taken out by Holly Holm. And the first significant bump in WoW token price was first noticed, because this was the day patch 6.2.3 hit the Americas region. It was interesting that patch 6.2, which was the last major content patch in Warlords of Draenor, didn't spark any demand for the selling of gold, and yet this minor patch did. Only a week or so later, there was a more significant bump in price. As you know, every year Blizzard holds a Black Friday sale across all of its games, but for the first time, the WoW token plays a factor. Cheap WoW means more players, it means more accounts, and more characters, and more need for gold. Moving on, it's pretty strange, but there was very little activity during a lot of 2016. Even the launch of World of Warcraft Legion, arguably one of the better expansions of this decade, didn't make an immediate impact. But slowly, the WoW token did rise, indicating that, thanks to factors like the price of profession items, led to a lot of gold entering the market, as in old garrison gold. February 6, 2017. A bunch of bros won the 51st championship sports ball game just the day before, but this Monday changed the WoW token landscape and brought the single biggest spike in price in its history. It was followed by a lot of disruption until the price settled at a nearly 40% gain over the price at the beginning of that week. Now think about that. It took all of 2016 for the price to steadily rise, while the token price skyrocketed in only a week. So what caused this? February 6th was the day that we were allowed to turn WoW tokens into Battle.net balance enabling players to use WoW Gold and convert it into currency that can be used in the Blizzard Digital Store. Even after the spike, the influence of the token to balance exchange would keep the price of the token trending upward, in ways that we would not have expected. Around mid-May, a new Injustice game hit store shelves. Nobody wanted to replace former FBI Director James Comey, and hell froze over because, well, Blizzard announced that Destiny 2 would launch on the Battle.net client. Emboldened by the WoW token to balance exchange, this cemented both fears and excitement that World of Warcraft Gold meant far more than what it was originally intended for, and it demonstrated that within the WoW community there's plenty of interest in loot shooter games. What's interesting though is that pre-orders weren't even available yet. 
I suspect that the sudden shift in price was probably the result of many players quickly buying up tokens in case the price would rise by the time pre-orders were available. A few days later, between May 23rd and May 26th, the WoW token was temporarily taken down, causing a significant disruption in price for several days before the store was restored on the 26th, when prices returned to normal, if not again to this slowly rising level. June 12th is my birthday, so hey, mark your calendars. My suit size, by the way, is a 38 short. Navy blue is one of my favorite colors, and I could use a pair of these. Anyway, June 12, 2017 was the day Destiny 2 became available for pre-order on Battle.net, and yet the bump was small, likely because more players were looking to spend their already acquired Battle.net balance rather than buying up tokens. June 13, though, is when the price really shot up. This was the day Patch 725 launched, which would soon take players into the Tomb of Sargeras. June 27, 2017. Fortnite, a PUBG clone, launched a few days prior as an early access game. It would later do okay, but the Tomb of Sargeras Mythic version opened up on this day, and I do find it pretty surprising that there was an effect on the WoW token price. That's because that wasn't it. It was most likely due to the rise of the Necromancer pack launching for Diablo 3. The cost for this? Approximately one WoW token. Hey, how much does a WoW shop mount cost? Approximately two WoW tokens, depending on who you ask. The Luminous Starseeker bundle was available on August 2nd, making it the first mount to launch after the WoW token to balance exchange started. On September 12th and 13th, Blizzard launched a combo of promotions. Shadow was introduced as the new charity pet. Also revealed was the BlizzCon virtual ticket, which for the first time would include a mount and would be available to purchase with Battle.net currency. As the first two-seater mount that you can buy from the shop, you can say that this sold pretty well. October 23rd, 2017, one of the most talented musicians of our generation celebrated the birthday, and another big buff was given to the WoW token. Gifting became an option at the Blizzard store, enabling purchasers of digital items like Overwatch boxes, Hearthstone packs, and WoW Game Time to be gifted seamlessly through the shop. This bump wasn't very big compared to others, but this marks a sharp rise in the average price of the token, at least for a time. November 2nd, 2017. This thing called BlizzCon happened. Wasn't a big deal, really. Multiple announcements, including the Battle for Azeroth expansion and Classic WoW, caused fluctuations over the next couple of days as more information was learned. This also marks a downturn for the average price of the token, whether it's returning to normal levels or simply a period where demand for game time or Battle.net balance is dwindling. It was December 20th, 2017, where in the United States, the Republican Party passed a massive tax reform bill, and I'm still waiting to see what good it's supposed to do. Fortunately, Blizzard was nice enough to unleash one of its biggest sales ever, with nearly all of its digital goods going for half price. The token was overwhelmed with traffic, bringing about one of its largest historical spikes to date. A couple of weeks later, it's January 16th, 2018. Another Street Fighter game was released, but because of Blizzard's insidious nature, they killed it with the dropping of Patch 735. It also brought a modest bump to the WoW token's price. On January 26, Dragon Ball Fighter Z released, obviously spiking the WoW token's price. I'm just kidding, but it was during this week that the battle for Azeroth Alpha began, unleashing loads of visuals and hype upon players. However, it was the days leading up to January 30th when the whispers of an upcoming BFA pre-order flew about. On the 30th, pre-orders finally became available, which allowed access to the first round of allied races, the Nightborn, High Mountain Torn, Lightforge Draenei, and the Void Elves. By now you must have noticed that when there's a big opportunity to save a lot of real money, this is when the price of the token spikes. In this case, the spike also leveled off with a higher average price for the WoW token. February 14th, it's Valentine's Day and love is in the air, der. But throughout this week, prices fluctuated for reasons I haven't quite figured out yet. Between Valentine's Day, the reactivation of the mobile auction house, and the Parkland Massacre, something between that caused a temporary disruption within the WoW token economy. Let's jump to May 17th. While the Backstreet Boys made a sudden comeback, that didn't make much of an impact on the WoW token like a Black Ops 4 did. Unlike the addition of Destiny 2 to the Battle.net umbrella, the announcement of Black Ops 4 on the launcher immediately followed with the start of pre-orders, resulting in another spike in the token price before it dipped to normal levels a few days later. On May 22nd, over in the world of WoW, uh, pretty much nothing happened. 
On the Overwatch side of Blizzard though, they were celebrating their two year anniversary with more skins, more stuff, and more reasons to blow a lot of Battle.net balance. Thanks, Warcraft Gold. On June 21st, WoW had its occasional welcome back weekend, inviting all inactive WoW accounts to play and offering a discount on character services. Did they work? Well, according to activity throughout the week, it did something. July 17th. Maybe it was the Heroes of the Storm promotion where some heroes were only given half of their cost, or maybe it was the Battle for Azeroth pre-patch. Here's what's most interesting about this date though. It also marks the beginning of a downward trend for the WoW token. Unlike the spiky peaks and valleys that I've been talking about, the typical reason for a drop in price is when the rate of supply is greater than the rate of demand. More and more players seem to be coming back in, stocking up on gold to prepare for the expansion. Not as many players seem to need to buy game time or battle net balance, maybe because they stocked up at this point. August 13th, the day of infamy. Okay, not, not infamy, but you know. The launch of Battle for Azeroth in a simultaneous worldwide release left a predictable spike for the WoW token, but at the same time, started the biggest downward trend in the token's history. Over the course of approximately two weeks, the WoW token lost nearly 40% of its total value. Numerous factors could be in play, including the reduced amount of gold that could be easily farmed from systems like mission tables, making it less likely for players to buy tokens with gold at the rate that they used to. One month later, on September 19th, while the United States and China measured their temperament in a smoldering trade war, Blizzard started the Dreadwake promotion, a mount offer gifted in exchange for investing into six months of game time. And sure enough, game time purchase with a WoW token counted. October 12th is Hugh Jackman's birthday. Hey, happy birthday. But anyway, on that day, not much went on in the land of Blizzard. However, Black Ops 4 did launch, giving a nice temporary bump in price. November 2nd. BlizzCon 2018 was a weekend to remember. And just not for everybody. Just like BlizzCon 2016, there was no big WoW-related reveal, so it comes to little surprise that there wasn't a really big bump. I do give credit to Warcraft 3 Reforged and the Meat Wagon pre-order bonus to get token holders spending though. November 19th. In the wake of BlizzCon 2018, against the growing backlash against mobile gaming and Battle for Azeroth's launch, even the resentment against arguable business practices, one basic tactic still persists. Black Friday sales. December 20th was no different, bringing forth a sale similar to previous years on mounts, pets, and other cosmetics. The difference here was that some of the digital goods would be shelved or temporarily retired from the store. One week into the new year, on January 7th, there was one similar bump, marking the last day of the sale. Slackers. It does make you wonder if the smaller bump meant poor results due to the public backlash against the promotion, or this could be a success because otherwise these items might not have been purchased. March 12th marked the beginning of yet another character service sale to coincide with the availability of the Cool Tyrion and the Zendalari allied races. The bump was modest, as was the bump on March 25th, when Blizzard started another Welcome Back weekend. What's interesting here is that on the final stretch here before we get to the present, is that the spikes in token prices are far more modest than before. However, the overall price of the token is slowly trending up. Keep in mind that the price of the token has very little to do with the overall health of the game, player population, or if the game is fun. This is more than anything the relationship between how many people are supplying the WoW token and how many of them are buying them up with gold. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did making it. It was fun and I've been wanting to do this for a while. Based on all of this data, feel free to leave your own conclusions in a comment below. I'm interested to hear what you folks think. Anyway, if you don't mind, press that like button if you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy.